<clears throat> All right, the next, the next set of reactions we're going to talk about are called Claisen reactions. Okay? The first thing I want to mention is how do you tell if you're doing a Claisen versus an aldol? So we saw before that aldol condensations typically involve aldehydes. And then your base is typically an OH minus. Claisen reactions will always involve esters, two separate esters. It could be any OR group. But what will be over the arrow, uh, that should be an OR group as well, OET. But will, what will be over the arrow is step one, a base, and that base will always be the same OR group as your ester, so OET minus. Step two, H3O positive. These are the two key things that separate an aldol from a clasin. Aldols involve just carbonyls or aldehydes with OH minus as your base. Clasins involve two esters and an OET minus followed by a H plus step. There's also one other key difference. We saw before that with aldols, we always abstract our most acidic proton. Well, in this example, I've given you two that are fairly acidic, the hydrogen on this alpha carbon and the hydrogen or hydrogens on this alpha carbon. And we know our base is gonna pull off either the left side or the right side. And I'll draw those hydrogens in here for the poison as well. The Claisen has a special rule, but I'll talk about that in a second. As far as the aldol is concerned, all you worry about is, all right, this isn't a bulky base, so it looks to make the most stable double bond, the most stable double bond that is in your enolate. So I have a tertiary hydrogen versus a secondary, and we know that the stability of double bonds increases the more substituted they are. So for example, a double bond that has four separate carbons on it versus a double bond that has three separate carbons versus trans versus cis versus a terminal versus a double bond with no carbons attached. So this is a general trend of stability of double bond, but basically if I look at this carbon right here and I know I'm going to form the enolate with the double bond O, I can either have this OH minus pull off the hydrogen over here, form that enolate like that, or I could have the OH minus grab one of these two alpha hydrogens and form the enolate there. If I compare the two enolates, I would have double bond there, O minus, versus double bond here, O minus. This double bond only has one other carbon attached to it. This double bond has one, two carbons attached to it. And so this is the more stable double bond you could form, which means that is the hydrogen you will prefer pulling off rather than the one on the right. So let's redraw this for a second. So between the two hydrogens that I have the option of pulling off, this OH minus will always preferentially grab this one. Because again, it makes the most stable double bond, the most stable enolate. And you'd be left with double bond, or single bond O minus. And then, like we saw before, that O minus can swing down, and the double bond will attack the carbonyl, pushing that up. Claisins have a different rule. For a Claisen condensation, the carbon that you pull hydrogens off of must have at least two hydrogens on it. And this is specific to Claisins. You must have at least two hydrogens on the carbon that you pull on the carbon with the hydrogens that you pull off from. 
So on this carbon, this tertiary carbon here, I only have one. I know I can't use that hydrogen. Here, I have two. So that is definitely going to be the carbon that I choose to deprotonate. And so, our base will come in, attack the alpha proton. This will swing up, and this will go up, and you'll form your enolate light. You'll form your enolate on the right side. That would be the enolate I formed. And just like the aldol from that point, the O minus would swing down and the double bond would attack the carbonyl and sign that up. But this is the these are the three main differences between the aldol and the clasin. Aldols involve aldehydes and OH minus as your base. Clasins involve esters, the OR group matching the OR group of your ester being your base. And then step two, H plus. Now let's run through this arrow, these arrows of the clasin and see what our product would end up being. So just like with the aldols, we're forming a ring, which means I'm going to number my carbons. We saw before that this is the carbon that does the attack, so I'll number that one, two, three, four. I'm making a four-membered ring based on these arrows. Typically, we like to make five or six member rings. I just happen to make this my example. But that doesn't mean you can't form a three or a four member ring. It's just not as favorable. So I'm making a four member ring. So I'm just going to start by drawing a four member ring. And let's say this was one, two, three, and four. Now I just have to connect the dots. Carbon three had a methyl on it. Carbon four was the carbon that got attacked, and it had the O, the double bond O, and the OET. The OET is unchanged for now but the double bond O swung up, so now it's an O minus. <clears throat> Finally, carbon one had that extra carbon coming off of it, say that that's carbon five over here, and that had the O, so carbon five, that has the double bond O that reformed, and it's OET group still there, intact. Now, just like what we saw for the second exam, whenever you have an O minus on a carbon, and there's a good leaving group like an OET or a CL or anything like that, the O minus always looks to swing down and kick that leaving group out. And so the result of my Claisen condensation, or sorry, my Claisen reaction, is double bond O, OET, my four membered ring, and methyl, and my double bond O. If I wrote, I'm just going to rotate this so we can look at it a bit more easily. Still the same thing, just now I have the double bond O there, and this. So I just took this and kind of shifted it like that. And remember how with the aldol reactions, I pointed out that you have that one, two, three setup. Carbon one has its C double bond O. Carbon two is an alpha carbon, and then carbon three had an OH for the aldol reaction. Well, we kind of have that set up here as well. Carbon one has an ester this time, carbon two is an alpha, and carbon three has a carbonyl. So the main difference is we have an ester and a carbonyl, or an ester and a ketone left over, whereas the aldol reaction ended us with an aldehyde, sorry, a, a ketone and an alcohol. Now, there's one fundamental rule you must always remember about Claisen reactions, and it comes down to why do we need these two alpha hydrogens? It has to do with the final product you get, because yes, this is what the final product will look like, but technically there's another step that gets to this. I said that the two, the two reactions you need to make a Claisen reaction happen is step one, the base, well, we use that, but we never use the HCO positive. What is the purpose of having that on the arrow? Well, it actually is a very important uh, there's a very important reason. So, let me draw that down here. One of the ring. So, one thing you must always remember is unless we tell you things are in, are 
uh, unless we say that one molecular equivalent or only one mole of something, there's always a ton of everything floating around, including the base that you were working with, OET minus. If you look at this structure, you should, you should recognize something right off the bat. We have a strong base and a really, really acidic proton in the middle. This alpha position is shared between two separate carbonyls. So that hydrogen is really acidic. And that means the OET minus is going to quickly come in and grab that proton, putting a negative charge on that carbon. So we have <coughs> this. And of course, that negative charge is in resonance with the two separate double bond O's. Now, the importance of this step is the fact that having that negative charge on the alpha position locks your ring in place. That ring can never be broken again. And then the HCO positive, well, that's what it's for now. That HCO positive comes in, we wash out all the base, and that carbon minus comes in and grabs one of these protons, neutralizing the oxygen. To give us the final product. Now, in this example, well, that didn't really change what I got at the end, right? I drew this and redrew it here, but they're the same thing. So why do I need to show this extra deprotonation step? Because it doesn't matter so much here, but if I didn't have that alpha proton, it would. So let's take a look at that other possible product we could have made, where I deprotonated from the left side of that Claisen reactant. Meaning, we had, let's see, it was something like this. OET, one, two, three, four, and we have the ester, and this, okay? What would have happened if I deprotonated the hydrogen on the left, where there was only one, where I said, well, that's a taboo, you don't do that. Why don't you do that? So, as usual, our base comes in, and let's say it does pull out that proton. Technically, it would, but you'll see why it won't give us the final answer. So we pull off that proton, we form our enolate, and we get a O minus, OET, double bond, OET. And now <coughs> this O minus will swing down, the double bond will attack the other carbonyl, swing up. Then you'd be left with still a four-membered ring, right? Because I have carbon one, two, three, four. So I draw that four-membered ring off the bat, and arbitrarily number one, two, three, four. So carbon one had a methyl sticking off of it. Carbon one was also connected to carbon five in this case, which let's say is going that way. And that is the carbonyl that reformed, so that should be where my ester is. OET. Let me draw this methyl little nicer. Okay. And carbon four had the oxygen, oxygen that got attacked. So it has the O minus and the OET. And just like before, we'll see that the O minus will swing down and kick the OET out. So that would leave me with this is my final product, the four membered ring. And I'm just going to rotate it again. So carbon four is over here, three, two, one, just so it's easier to visualize. So I have a double bond over here, because this is the carbon where the O minus swung back down and kicked the OET out. And then carbon one is connected to carbon five, which still has its ester. And again, you can double check to make sure you did the right, you got the right structure, because you should have ester on one, alpha carbon on two, carbonyl on three. And then I also have the methyl on carbon one that I almost forgot to draw in. Now, why is this so important? Why is this different from what we just did with the two alpha protons? Because of that extra step that I went through the process of showing you before. We have a ton of OET minus floating around. So let's take this structure for a second and ask what happens in the presence of OET minus. So OET minus, we said, is a good base, and it likes to pull off alpha protons. Now this carbon right here is an alpha carbon, but it has no alpha protons, because we took the only one it had in the very first step. And while this is an alpha proton position, it's not nearly as acidic as this position would have been. 
And there's a chance that what happens is rather than this OET minus coming in and decoordinating one of these two alpha protons, granted it can, but it won't really do anything after that point, what could happen is that OET minus comes in and attacks this carbonyl here. It could attack this carbonyl as well, but all it would do is kick out the other OET, so nothing would change. This is all a matter of probabilities. Eventually this would happen. The OET minus comes in and attacks that carbonyl, and you form this. Now what is that O minus going to look to do? Well, just like every other time, that O minus is going to look to swing down. But now it has a couple options. It could kick the OET out again, but it has another option as well. It can break the bond that we formed in making that ring, putting the negative charge back on this carbon. And if it does that, you would end up getting this. Intermediate that you've, or the intermediate you formed after your first deprotonation step. Why does it do this? Because by breaking that bond, reforming the carbonyl, and putting the negative charge over here, well, that negative charge is still stable because it can resonate with the oxygen. So, yes, that OET minus could pull off a proton. Yes, that OET minus could attack here. But the only thing that would change the structure would be, as if it would be if it attacked this carbonyl, because then it can break the ring apart. And this is the point. It really limits that final product that we were trying to make, that four-membered ring, because there's no alpha proton you can pull off that locks that ring in place. If this methyl wasn't here, if I'm looking at this structure and that methyl wasn't there, I have that alpha proton, which I can pull off making negative, and this negative will lock the ring. But because we didn't have that, those two alpha protons, it didn't work out so nicely. So the long story short is, whenever you do a Claisen reaction, always make sure that you pull off from the site that has at least two alpha hydrogens. Aldols don't have that rule, so you don't have to worry about it in that case.